everyone and welcome. Thank you all so much for joining us today for this live stream event. My name is Alexia and I am the project and event manager at Microsoft Toronto Reactor. Before we begin, I'd like to quickly review two items with you, our code of conduct and event guidelines. First, please take a moment to review our code of conduct. Microsoft Reactor seeks to provide a respectful environment for both our audience and presenters. We encourage engagement in the chat, but please be mindful of your commentary, remain professional and on topic. And secondly, our event guidelines. The session is being recorded and will be available on demand through the Microsoft Reactor YouTube channel in about 24 to 48 hours. I will share the link with you for our YouTube channel in the chat a little later. And if you've not been on a live stream before through YouTube, please note that you will have to create an account on YouTube in order to access and interact in the chat. You can set that up now. And if you're unable to use the chat but have question for our speaker, please feel free to reach out to us through social media or on Meetup. And it is now time for our session of the day. I will bring in our speaker, Roy, to the screen. Hi there, Roy. Hi. How are you? Hey, everyone. Th thanks for uh, having me. Well, we're so excited for your session. I will actually just, you know, take on with the floor now. Um, yeah. Okay. Take it away. Okay, great. Okay. Uh, thank you for the uh, intro, Alexia. So, um, so yeah, uh, I will be talking about uh, Azure Kubernetes Service and um, how uh, you can use uh, Istio Service Mesh with it, and um, and what it's about, and uh, also share my experiences uh, on uh, my uh, usage. So um, let's see here. So a little bit about, about myself. Uh, you know, my name is Roy Kim. I've been working with Microsoft Technologies uh, for 18 plus years. Uh, more recently, been focusing on Azure, um, uh, Microsoft 365, and Kubernetes. Um, uh, did quite a bit of .NET development way back. Uh, five years as a Microsoft uh, MVP. Um, I'm an independent consultant, and uh, you can find my blog. Um, at roykim.ca and uh, graduate from uh, University of Toronto. So, well, uh, today, um, kind of the agenda I'll walk through is just a very quick overview of Azure Kubernetes Service, and just kind of give you a demo of an, some application, an application um, that's using Istio, and kind of doing a walkthrough of that. I'll, I'll talk about the Istio uh, Service Mesh, just a high-level overview. Uh, a few of, of its capabilities and how I've used them and commenting on uh, uh, how uh, how uh, effective they are, um, how it's helped in the projects that I've been in, and uh, what were some good, uh, you know, key project takeaways. A little about uh, monitoring your service mesh, and then we can end off with a general Q&A. But um, i like to mention that, uh, you know, I, I encourage any questions during this uh, talk. Um, I'm open to having a dialogue um, and so that uh, it's engaging and, uh, and that, you know, uh, you uh, who are part of this uh, will have uh, some good takeaways. So, um, you know, first of all, uh, what is uh, Azure Kubernetes Service? Um, it's um, a really a managed orchestration, um, uh, container orchestration service. So, so really, it's Kubernetes kind of uh, kind of wrapped up um, by Azure, such that it's uh, you know pretty like managed, um, you know, you just, you don't have to install and configure or um, much, uh, much of it, uh, but still you get a bit of uh, control, but uh, really the deep underlying infrastructure, the VMs, the nodes, you know, that's kind of, um, you know, abstracted and you don't have to manage that so much, but still we can take advantage of uh, the Kubernetes kind of technologies uh, such as service discovery, load balancing, uh, auto scale, um, you know, uh, pod container deployment and health monitoring and more. 
right? But uh, typically, Azure Community Service really supports microservices-based applications or applications uh, or microservices architectures, right? So that's kind of really the sweet spot of using Azure Kubernetes. Um, and um, how it differs from other, uh, you know, uh, let's say app service or Azure Functions or even VMs is that, um, you know, it's really uh, like, to me, I like to describe it as a micro data center uh, where a lot of kind of software defined controls, you know, at like very uh, networking level that even like a developer has uh, some control and abilities, right? And also hosting many applications all at once. And it's really the resiliency that um, you can have uh, control and benefit. So next, um, oh, so yeah, so other things I talked about. So this is like a high level, very simple kind of architecture um, <clears throat> of Azure Community Service where, you know, um, on the left, you have the kind of the cluster manager, uh, kind of like the brains, right, to help schedule and deploy um, your apps into like pods and then, and then schedule them out or place them into various nodes. Um, it's not something that you ha you you have to be mindful of. So like allocating the, the appropriate like CPU memory, you know, disk perhaps, right? So um, so left side is kind of Azure managed. On the on the right side, it's a bit more cu customer managed, which is really the the VM uh, infrastructure, right? And this is kind of bound into a, a uh, virtual network, right? So that's just kind of uh, very very high level kind of. Um, kind of general architecture of what Azure Kubernetes service looks like. Um, and so now uh, getting to the topic of a service, before we get to what Istio is, I should talk about, well, what is a service mesh? Okay, so, um, so Istio is a, you know, really a kind of a implementation or a type of service mesh. So really a, a service mesh, um, taken from kind of how Red Hat um, defines and I like their definition is really um, it's how uh, requests are routed between your microservices, right, or your 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 uh, distributed uh, uh, application, right, throughout within your distributed application, right, uh, through a bunch of uh, proxies, right. So, so like this uh, dark green box is really kind of your your microservice, right, and a microservice can be, um, you know, is to me I, I would say you know, just, just uh, to put it simply, it's just really a, an app or a set of APIs, right? That are kind of, um, you know, logically organized, right? So, you know, microservice, let's say an e-commerce website can be a shopping cart and one can be kind of the, the UI, the general UI, right? Or a UI component. Another one could be kind of orders and catalogs, right? But it's all distributed, right? So. Um, if when you have a highly distributed and kind of um, you know uh, segmented and uh, you know sliced up right like how does um, each uh, microservice talk with one another right so um, and it can get complicated right but this is where a service mesh helps manage that uh, traffic and routing between one another right um, so that it's that logic is really decoupled and so <clears throat> the idea is really having uh, proxies right so you know within um, alongside a, a microservice you have a proxy right and the proxies is what really talks to uh, one another on behalf of each microservice, right? And the proxy, right, um, is also, you can call it in a, a sidecar, right, has the instructions, right, on what to do, right? So, um, you know, you write some declarative kind of uh, logic or code and that will get deployed to all the sidecars. So let's, you know, and and I'll get that more in, uh, um, I'll, I'll get more into that uh, in a demo application, but really I just want to mention that what a uh, service mesh is and uh, the architecture, right, is that it really involves uh, sidecar uh, proxy technology and how they're um, uh, programmed, right, or instructed to talk to another, right, to, to manage 
traffic or and uh, like you know uh, such as kind of routing rules, uh, retry logic, you know kind of load balancing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So there's there's many capabilities, and the whole point is to decouple that logic so that you don't have to like you know hark you know put that logic right alongside into your application code. So that's really the key point. Now <clears throat> with with Istio, um, let's see here. Uh, with Istio, uh, this, the Istio service mesh uses a uh, proxy uh, to inter intercept all the, the traffic. <laughs> so um, and the proxy that is used is called the Envoy proxy. Okay, and this is its own little open source project. Okay, so Istio and even other um, service meshes or other uh, uh, technologies would use uh, Envoy, right? <clears throat> um, uh, for kind of yeah, the, the sidecar proxy, and uh, so that gets planted alongside uh, each service, like ser in this case, service A and service B. Now Istio um, has something called a control plane, right? So um, the control plane is think of it as kind of like the brains of kind of managing all the proxies, envoy proxies. So like as a engineer or as a developer, you would say, okay, uh, you would program something like, okay, service A, <clears throat> um, you know, uh, can have, you know, route traffic, allow traffic to service B, also, um, include retry logic such that if service B fails, you know, retry up to three times, you know, up to, you know, uh, you know, 30 seconds wait time, etc. like timeout, right? Um, and also uh, secure that traffic from A to B uh, with mutual TLS. So you, 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 you know, code that logic, the issue control plane will kind of deploy that out to all the envoy proxies, right? And so when traffic comes along, makes a request to service A, you know, and then um, service A wants to make a service B, right? Then um, the Envoy proxy will manage uh, how that uh, traffic behavior should be, right? So kind of this is kind of uh, that flow and that architecture uh, kind of with Istio, um, uh, simply put. So... Um, these are, okay, so um, I'm going to go over uh, some of these um, demo applications. Okay, um, I'll mostly talk about I'll talk about the book info app, right, which uh, uses the uh, Istio service mesh, right here, and um, in here I just want to lay out an AKS cluster that I've built out. Okay, and includes. Um, uh, right here, the book info app right here, okay, in the middle. And uh, there's a microservice called a product page, which is kind of the UI, um, a reviews, um, a component, uh, details, and also rating. So I'll get, I'll get into that in a bit, okay? Um, the one thing I want to point out here is that um, Istio also provides an ingress uh, gateway Right, the ingress controller, and what that is is a mechanism to allow traffic or to manage traffic um, ex uh, external to the cluster, kind of inbound, also uh, ingress and egress um, into your Kubernetes uh, applications. Okay, um, <clears throat> so, you know, so the other um, a popular option of having an uh, ingress controller is the nginx ingress controller so uh, for those uh, that are especially starting out usually this is the go-to example right to be deployed to allow uh, uh, traffic into your cluster so in this case you know i have um, what's great about kubernetes is that i can have both right and, and you have a lot of great flexibility so i have this guest book app um, that uh, has uh, that leverages the nginx ingress controller okay uh, and then i can leverage the uh, istio's ingress controller which has a bit more uh, some some you know of its own capabilities right uh, so 
you can use both, you can use one or the other, but uh, the key message here is that uh, Istio also provides a ingress controller um, and uh, for general uh, your traffic management uh, strategy. So I'm gonna pause for a bit if uh, anyone would like to uh, have a question, comment or anything. All right, okay, um, I will move on. Now, let's see here. So that is um, those component sections I talked about. Um, uh, one thing, uh, you know, to add to, you know, uh, an AKS cluster is that you can um, incorporate or associate like other Azure resources, right? Uh, such as the Azure Container Registry, Azure AD for role-based access within uh, your Kubernetes cluster, right? Like per namespace, as an example, uh, Azure Monitor, Log Analytics, and also leveraging Azure Managed Disks for persistent storage. So. I just wanted to, as a side note, mention um, uh, the bigger picture of what a AKS environment holds and um, and all the uh, um, the the goodness and uh, re Azure resources that the Azure platform provides. So, um, the let's talk about the uh, book info app, right? Kind of uh, how it is, uh, how it behaves. So, okay, actually, maybe I should uh, revert to a demo here, okay, um, itself. So here is the book info app. It is uh, part of my uh, AKS uh, cluster, right? So uh, I can show that through here. Um, let's see here. So I have a namespace called the book info, right? And uh, I just, you know, deploy these kind of uh, YAML files to deploy that. Um, hold, hold on a sec. So, and uh, let's see here, workloads. I can show book info. Let's see here. So yeah, right here. So per namespace. Just so that I can show that I, you know, what what it looks like from the Azure portal perspective of AKS is that I have these um, uh, kind of uh, workloads or Kubernetes deployment objects, right? So it's the product page, which is the UI, ratings, reviews. Uh, if you have your reviews, version one, two, and three, okay, and details and ratings. So that's um, from the portal point of view. Right, so you know that uh, this app is live. And uh, so going back to here, the book info. So so what it is, is the actual UI is the um, uh, product info kind of microservice, right? So one thing I wanna know here, as I refresh, okay, uh, there's certain elements here that, that kind of change, right? Uh, and that's because <clears throat> it, the, uh, traffic to different components are kind of like uh, rotating or round robin, right? Kind of evenly. So um, let's see here. So this is the first version, right? Where you don't see any uh, ratings. So the rating service is not being uh, or uh, used. Okay, where this is another, the rating service. So that you see a rating here of kind of five out of five stars and four out of uh, five stars, right? And then here is the, the review coming from the review service, okay? And this is the book details uh, service. It's all coming, which, yeah, all the microservices are coming together to um, formulate, uh, render this page. So, and then um, as I hit refresh again, you see reviews in red stars. So that's a, a, another uh, version, okay? So, let me refresh again. And as you see, it kind of uh, goes through different uh, versions. Okay. Now, let's revert to, um, let's see, uh, the back to my slides. Okay. And 
it's, oops. Okay, so here, as you saw, the product page will make a call out to reviews version one, which, yeah, in fact, it didn't show any reviews. Okay, as you see, there's no no uh, stars. And then reviews two um, uh, shows uh, stars, black stars, okay? And then that microservice calls the rating service, okay, to find out how many uh, stars it uh, was rated, all right? Uh, and then, um, and then it, version three uh, is simply just red stars, okay? So um, Istio, in this case, um, is you know kind of programmed or instructed to kind of um, uh, divide the traffic, kind of like one third, one third, one third, okay? Um, and so that is uh, an example of how traffic is managed, okay? Um, and also here, as I mentioned, the, the detail service, okay, which uh, which is the information on on the left side of the page. So that's kind of the kind of how that uh, demo is uh, uh, designed, okay. And uh, so the the key uh, one scenario, right? The reason why we have kind of um, uh, balancing the traffic three ways is that it's a demonstration of the possibilities, right, of managing uh, the traffic, right? So, um, you know, one thing is you can have like A-B testing, right? So like one third of users will see a, a certain version um, and then another set of users will see a second version and then, and then see another, uh, a third version, right? And then you can kind of, um, uh, see what the user experience is, their feedback, you know, between the th three uh, versions, right? So to have uh, A-B testing scenario. Uh, another scenario is for, uh, let's say, Canary deployment. So let's say um, you are in your second version and, this, and you can have it that 100% of traffic uh, from product page to the whole reviews uh, component uh, is going to version two. but uh, you know, you have this really, you know, massively high volume, heavily visited um, website or application, and you know, uh, deploying V3 is uh, a little risky, right? You never know, right? right? In production, so you want to deploy it um, and just give a little bit of tra uh, traffic, right, to V3, like let's say 5% or 10%, okay? and 90% goes to V2. And that's where Istio comes along. And then you can, again, just declaratively, you know, in kind of the YAML files, uh, define that, right? And it's really changing uh, literally one or a few lines, okay? And then, you know, um, and if, the, as you divert, like let's say 10% of your traffic there, and then uh, for like a few hours or a day, you test that and it's good. Um, you know, performance metrics, uh, no errors, you check your logs, it's good. Then you start to, you know, um, di you know, add more tr uh, traffic to V3, okay? Um, you know, 50%, 75%, and then to 100. And in that process, if there's any, uh, like, you know, uh, big errors or issues, you can always easily uh, fall back to version two. So, so this is the um, advantage with Istio is that let's say you didn't have Istio, then what would you do, right? Like maybe you have to uh, program that, you know, possibly at the at, right into the, the web server of some sort, or even your your application code, you know, um, itself, right? And really managing that, it becomes highly coupled to you know uh, different uh, um, uh, areas in your 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 application or the your your system architecture, and and really um, this is what Istio is designed for: is to decouple that, um, you know, have its own deployment lifecycle. You know, you manage risk; it's more stable, it's more resilient, right? So that's kind of the whole key uh, benefit of Istio. So hopefully you guys, um, that's making sense, okay? Um, so yeah, let me go through the key, uh, whoops, the, 
let's see here, the key features, okay. Uh, routing rules, as I mentioned, A-B testing, canary deployment, um, you know, uh, circuit breaker, okay, which uh, is, is something I've used and uh, it's pretty, it's pretty practical, especially in a very uh, uh, high volume you know enterprise class application where let's say um you know uh, a, a certain service right gets really uh, uh like let's say that rate uh, review service right um gets a lot of a lot of traffic coming from different microservices right and that uh, ver uh the review service is really important and it cannot be um uh it can, you know it really cannot fail right because then um, the rest of the application may fail, all right, or most of it. So a circuit breaker pattern will um, will make sure that it doesn't overload. Okay, let's say for example, it account you know the amount of traffic it's having, or error rates or whatever. So it may um, not uh, allow traffic or limit the traffic and allow another area of the application to not work or or work at a um, uh, less uh, uh, lesser like performance expectations right uh, to compromise that then then really allow that uh, uh, let's say this review service to to come down right so it's really um, uh, much of a risk mitigation kind of strategy here right um, also you know, you have, uh, you know, uh, set timeouts as well, right? Uh, you know, if, because you don't want uh, users just waiting, 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 waiting. So you have a timeout and then kind of give appropriate feedback to the users, um, you know, retry. So maybe a service A, a service B, um, uh, a service A is calling service B and service B, right, uh, you know, may uh, experience, you know, transient errors. Of sorts, and maybe it's calling an external API, and you never know, like you know, for credit card uh, verification or, or anything, and that may, um, and it, you know, that may go down uh, periodically, right? So, but may you know come back up pretty quickly, right? So, uh, Istio will have retry logic saying that okay, if I get some kind of uh, you know uh, 400 or you know um, uh, server error of some sort that you know let's uh, you know uh, retry that traffic replay that traffic uh, with uh, and, and the calling application wouldn't know that retry is happening right but the calling application like say service EA would just be waiting a bit longer right so you get that more and in the end it becomes a bit of a smoother experience okay although you have to wait a bit more uh, and but you know um it's better than you know witnessing an actual like error feedback or error uh or an exception right so again it's putting that logic into um istio for hand to handle right so that you don't have to like hard code or put that logic elsewhere and and manage that uh, another key feature of Istio is uh, general observability. Uh, so it has uh, capabilities of uh, monitoring, like metrics, distributed tracing, uh, access logs of the traffic. You know, like 200, you know, HTTP status codes and such. So that that becomes pretty uh, helpful for like uh, troubleshooting. And another thing is uh, secure communication, right, between microservices, right. So having uh, TLS. Um, you know, encrypted traffic, um, you know, authentication and authorization between services. So, you know, one service can't be called by another service unless, you know, it knows who they are, right? And also authorize uh, certain uh, calls, you know, uh, uh, between services. So again, it's uh, all these capabilities and there's really more features um, of Istio, but you know, these are the kind of the key ones that I find in my experience have been uh, pretty uh, useful. Um, so yeah, and Istio Service Mesh supports uh, microservice architecture and managing HTTP traffic, right? So it's more central HTTP traffic. So here is just I want to visualize kind of got from the Istio website uh, documentation, right? Just uh, again, um, 
just illustrating kind of how traffic is managed, right? So it, right here, service A calling uh, service B, okay, um, you know, kind of low balance between uh, various pods. And really, as I'm uh, having a canary version and you're managing, you know, 5% of that traffic to a newer newer version. And then what if, when you find that stable, you know, you offload, you divert the traffic to 100%, okay? Um, in this case, uh, another scenario, which is pretty, pretty cool and nifty is that um, you can, uh, manage and route the traffic based on content, right? So if um, the HTTP header, like in a user agent is Android or iPhone, then, you know, you can do it to different microservices or different versions, right? Uh, you can route by, you know, query string, you can route by, you know, HTTP kind of uh, uh, your, your URL paths. So, you know, pretty much anything kind of around, um, that HTTP provides that you can kind of uh, hook into. So, so that's another example. Any a pause for any questions? Okay, okay, cool. So um, here I'm getting into kind of the monitoring part. So this is an example of that book info app where um, from the ingress gateway to the product page service, um, you see uh, traffic, uh, how it's how, how it's flowing, right? So, you know, um, so between uh, from the product page kind of UI, uh, that traffic is being is split between details and reviews, okay? And from reviews, uh, you know, you go to the various um, versions, okay? in this case. Okay, so, and uh, as we saw, it was evenly split. Okay, and then reviews version two and three called the rating service. Okay, here, um, you know, uh, indicates there's some traffic is red, so that's some something to look into, and that's where you can kind of look into the uh, access logs and see kind of what's happening there, you know, um, as such. So this is through uh, Kiali, which is an open source um, uh, software, right, that works well with uh, Istio Service Mesh. So let me uh, bring a live demo. So what Kiali looks like, okay. So here is Kiali. And so I've sent it around, uh, filtered it with the book info namespace. And we can see um, it's all green, you know, traffic was flowing. And uh, let's see here, requests per second. So the cool thing with Kiali and, and really, yeah, another way of, of uh, um, uh, explaining what Kiali does is really visualizing your service mesh, okay? So, I, you know, with your edge labels, I hear, it, you know, uh, requests per second. Uh, request percentage, percentage, okay, so 50, 50, okay, that the trap, you know, which is 50 percent, uh, 50, 50 of the traffic that's flowing out of the product page, okay. Um, let me do something here. Let me hit refresh a few times just to um, throw some traffic into this application so it will be reflective into the Kali, Kali dashboard. Okay, if we go to request per second, we see a little bit higher, like 0 0.42 per second. Um, see here, you can uh, refresh every 10 seconds. Okay, uh, also we can look at response time, okay, which is really helpful for in terms of performance. So it's pretty, pretty speedy, I would say. You know, these are pretty good you know, uh, in the milliseconds. So that is, hold on, let's see here. And uh, if I had more like traffic, if I, it would have been good if I put a like a low test tool against this, right? You can kind of see uh, animation of error. Okay, so actually, hold on. Can I put, display some, oh yeah, animation, traffic animation. There you go. Okay, there we go. Okay, 
that looks more cool. So let me go back and hit refresh a few times to uh, throw some traffic across. So here again, we see the traffic flowing. So it's, I, know, I think it's really awesome to visualize kind of your distributed application and see kind of the value and capabilities in, in a visual way that um, uh, Istio provides, right? So, and I can click in here and you can kind of see more, I know it looks pretty small to you, but um, you can see more metrics here. Uh, let's see here, right? You know, hosts, flags, uh, any kind of errors, uh, etc. So that is um, kind of from the observability point of view. Um, I will pause if there's any questions here. So, okay. Um, here we can kind of see you know, uh, deeper dive into the, the, the logs, metrics, outbound metrics right here. Um, let's see here, if I go to, through the services, right? Services object, uh, traces, uh, let's see here. And let me see if uh, I can show you the YAML. So here's a, a bit of a, okay, it's pretty small, but here's a sneak peek of what the YAML looks like. I'm not gonna go into it, but you know, just to give you an idea of, um, you know, the amount of that coding I've been mentioning. Okay, actually, wait a minute. So book info. So that's the virtual service right here. Okay, but um, anyways, I'm gonna keep this presentation a bit kind of high level. Okay, so uh, let's see, go back to the slides. So that's that, okay. Um, oh, there's the other app, um, voting app of kind of seeing that, but uh, uh, just another example of what uh, Kiali shows here. Okay, so um, so in summary, um, I like to mention kind of uh, like what has my experience with uh, been with. Uh, you know, I've um, built uh, applications kind of for kind of retail uh, operations uh, among uh, various uh, stores and warehouses where. Um, you know, just uh, tracking kind of uh, inventory. And so really, um, you know, um, I've, I've used Istio where, uh, you know, for a, a microservices uh, .NET Core kind of application. And uh, it was, uh, you know, very useful uh, using, you know, the circuit breaker, retries, the traffic, uh, you know, routing rules, um, you know, uh, canary uh, scenarios for deployment, etc. cetera, load, load balancing, um, uh, performance monitoring, all that stuff, right? So that was uh, very useful in my project experience and I, I continue to hopefully kind of uh, use that. There are other players or other options like console, uh, Linkerd as well, which I haven't really dealt with, uh, or open service mesh, OSM. Okay, uh, that's another relatively new open source project. But, you know, those are um, other options that you can uh, look, look into as well. And there's there's a few others as well. Uh, and uh, so from a really project uh, experience point of view, um, it's been a good experience. Documentation is, is pretty good. Um, I have dealt uh, uh, went deeper into very advanced scenarios. And that's where, you know, especially for open source software where, um, you know, documentation could be limited or kind of getting support or help through the, you know, uh, forums or communities can get uh, limited. But really that having, you know, a good uh, foundation is is uh, for, you know, your traffic management is, is there. It's really solid. Uh, it continues to get better. Um, one 
thing that's really tricky is is upgrading uh, Istio. Uh, I think it's getting better, um, you know, because you have to update the control plane and the data plane, and and how do you do that, uh, you know, smoothly, um, you know, especially in production, right? So that's something to watch out for because uh, you you know you need to have an upgrade uh, strategy and upgrade uh, path. Um, and planning, like, you know, every, like, you know, four to six, seven months, right? Especially for secure, uh, security patches, they may come out. So, um, you know, in summary, really great for traffic management capabilities, uh, helps as part of your resiliency and scalability um, um, goals. Okay, uh, can be applied to Azure Kubernetes service or any, any Kubernetes like GCP, AWS. Okay, um, really helps support you know your your really classic uh, microservice architecture and really I think they go they really go hand in hand. You know what I mean? Um, you know you, you can't go without it, right? Uh, have, you know, uh, I think Istio it kind of manages at TCP level. I haven't really tried that too much, but I think uh, it can. Okay, but really, you just need to focus on, you know, most cases, just HTTP. So um, so that is all. Uh, I just want to leave it up for just general Q&A. Uh, it's my Twitter handle and email. So uh, let me look in the chat window on the side here. Um, and let me know if there's any question. Hi, again, I'm just going to jump in here. Um, yeah, for sure. So um, Q&A to anyone, please feel free to send your questions in the chat. Um, we have here your contact info. I'm sure if anybody has a question in the future, they can contact you. Um, and yeah, can I ask their question to you directly? If But yeah. Um, I'm just gonna take a few more minutes here while questions have been asked. Um, to have a quick reiteration here for the our session, I shared earlier in the chat our survey link. If you have a minute to share your experience on your sessions, please feel free to do so on the link um, above. We also have... Um, Meetup, we're on Meetup. The Toronto the Microsoft Reactor is on Meetup as well as multiple social media. If you're interested in joining, in joining sorry, future session, um, you can register on Meetup and always reach out to us on our social media. And uh, yeah, let's have a look. I'm having a look at the chat here, see if there's any questions for now. Um, yeah. Well, Roy, I think we can give it another minute or two. And um, yeah, <laughs> doesn't look like we have any question. It seems like everything was very clear and uh, well received. So, I mean, I think we can leave it as that. Roy, thank you so much for joining us again. We have some comments here. Um, again, I think it was just all very clear. Um, yeah, thanks so much, Roy, for joining us again tonight. And um, yeah, we hope to have you again very soon. Great. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Have a good night. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye.